Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today, many times people discuss on Rahu and Ketu together. But today, it's not Rahu, it's not Ketu. It is not even Mars and Saturn, neither is it Sun and Moon. These are very famous conjunctions which people keep discussing together. What happens when they become active? But today, we are going to discuss on jupiter and saturn and when i say we will discuss i don't mean to say we will discuss conjunctions of these two planets or mutual aspects okay so i have named this video as the dance of jupiter and saturn and i also made a video a long time back the dance of mars and saturn so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it you can find it in this playlist itself okay so it is very essential for us to understand these two planets and at times I feel these two are maybe one of the most neglected planets in astrology, okay? Most of the things that we know about these two planets are more on a higher level, okay? But how do they behave? How do they function at a practical realm? So that is something which we should understand and we need to understand these two planets together also okay which means they always work in harmony with each other one cannot exist without the other and today we will try to see how that is and why that is and many a times when we have issues in one of these planets we can rectify it using the other planet okay rectify does not mean that we fix some karma or we uh, fix some technical problem or an issue in a, in, a, in a negative sense but improving one of these also improves the other okay so today we will discuss about it in short and yes as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your jupiter saturn or any other planet or any other area of your life then you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally and yes God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And many people have requested me to make the video of Jupiter's direct motion, which will happen the next month. So I will try my best to upload it very fast. And also the September horoscope video will come fast. And also very soon I will launch the video for Jupiter's transit into Sagittarius. And I will do it in a bit different way with a twist there okay uh, nothing's uh, nothing dramatic but we'll try to add new things because most of the times that video becomes very monotonous everybody just talks jupiter enters this house this happens okay it doesn't work like that okay all right so today we were about to discuss about jupiter and saturn and what is jupiter basically See, Jupiter represents many things. I have made a video two, three days back on the secret of Jupiter. So in that, I told that because Vaman Dev asked three steps of land from Bali Maharaj. Okay? Therefore, when we take to some spiritual path or some spiritual progress or a spiritual community, then we also have to make some sacrifices in life, in our mundane life. Because after that only Bali Maharaj was elevated. Okay, he was blessed by Vaman Dev that you will become the next in the first benediction. Second benediction was that till you become Indra in the next Manvanta, you will reside in Sutala, which is an underwater heavenly planet. Okay. And the third benediction was that I will personally reside in Sutala as your doorkeeper. So these are three great benedictions which Vaman Dev bestowed, which is far more than what Bali Maharaj expected, I would say, before he was doing the Yajna. Okay. So now the point is, Jupiter will represent all these things. And at a mundane level, Jupiter also represents our ability to have a vision for our life. So Sun represents the goal of life. Jupiter represents the vision. And that is why they are best friends. Yes. These two are actually very good friends, Jupiter and Sun, because Sun is like the king. The king says, I want this. It's like the goal. And then the minister, Brihaspati, says, 
okay you want to do this i have a plan for you how about doing it this way how about doing this first then next then next okay and then he consults the commander in chief which is mars and mars says okay whatever you say i will do it all right so that is why these three are very good friends and moon represents the people living inside the kingdom okay so ultimately the war is for the king and the people inside and also the queen moon is also the queen of course so now jupiter if well placed so now the thing is how do you know if jupiter is well placed in your chart you may have a lot of confusions jupiter is well placed in this divisional chart it is not well placed in that divisional chart okay so for example in navamsha your jupiter may be well placed but in the samsha your jupiter is not well placed in chaturthamsha your your jupiter may be uh, well placed okay or in some other chart it may not be well placed so how do you know well you can do an astrological analysis but if you want the shortcut i'll tell you you know what the divisional charts represent okay so for example navamsha represents to some extent your married life and your marriage and your ability to connect with the divine okay that these things are represented by navamsha and then the samsha represents your ability to make an impact in this world that is why many times people ask me that suppose uh, in ancient times in india suppose if a lady was a housewife then did it mean that all the planets in the dasamsa of that lady were debilitated or they were afflicted or they were in bad houses was it like that no it doesn't mean that the samsa is not see the definition of career has become very external these days okay so so the thing is nobody needs to have a position or a tag of a ceo of a company or a manager to do something in this world because you are always doing activities in this world you are a you are having a job or you are a businessman or you are a painter you are an artist or you are a housewife anybody you are you are always doing some activity you are always contributing to the world okay so it is not that if you have a good dasamsa you will become the ceo of a company or something it's not like that okay that is more of the lagna chart but dasamsa tells you the impact that you make in this world how much can you make this world a better place that is what the dasamsa chart talks about okay so for that you don't have to be in any position okay and saturn is the karak for the dasamsa chart so then we have you know d4 then we have d16 so all these divisional charts are there so how to know if jupiter is well placed so or badly placed how do you know that so just check yourself how how much of a vision do you have pertaining to these divisional charts or i mean to say these areas of your life so for example the samsa do you have a vision for what you want to do in this world now you may be in a big company you may be the ceo of a company externally but do you actually have a vision is that something which you want to do does it make you fulfilled does your work make you fulfilled as a person does it make you happy if yes then your jupiter is probably well placed or is being supported by all the other planets okay even if it is debilitated or it is in dusthana but suppose you are hopeless about your career which means things are going good sometimes they are bad sometimes they are good but you don't know what what will happen what you will do in life you 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 feel sometimes okay i'm doing this 9 to 5 job one day i will retire and one day i will die then i will perish do you think like that about yourself or do you think that no i am born to do something very important for the society not great again all right that's it's it's not externally that you build some monument or you build a taj mahal or you gain a million followers i'm not talking of that kind of greatness how much do you believe that you can make this world a better place or do you feel that anyways what can be done you know just just be and just eat sleep and then then just die one day okay if that is what you feel about yourself then maybe jupiter is having challenges in your the samsa chart okay so jupiter represents the vision the plan that you have 
okay in every divisional chart he will tell you to what extent is your planning there okay so therefore now what what does saturn represent it's very good to plan it's very good to have these fancy ideas it is very good to be optimistic but to what extent are you willing to pay for those to what extent pay doesn't mean just pay money okay <laughs> so you can also check saturn in the divisional charts like this how will you know how saturn is placed just check saturn in the navamsha for example how much sacrifices are you ready to make for your married life yes for your partner for your husband for your wife how much sacrifices are you ready to make to have an impact in this world for other people that saturn in the samsa okay so jupiter gives you this optimism that yes i can do it or i will do it or i want to do it that's what jupiter is and then saturn will tell you that yes you want to do it but you got to do it <laughs> There's a big difference between wanting something and doing it. Okay, so many times when uh, you see people and you ask them, hey, can you do this? And then they say, yes, 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 I want to do it. But you ask them, will you do it? Yeah, yeah, I want to do it. Will you do it? Yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> because when somebody says that I want to do it, but I, I am not doing it, it means their Saturn is not well placed in that area of their life, in that divisional chart. Okay. Even if it is exalted, by some means it will be spoiled. How much patience do you have to endure through those difficulties? So therefore, Jupiter and Saturn are always together next to each other because they always go hand in hand. If there is no Jupiter, Saturn will give you depression. Suppose uh, Jupiter is badly placed in a divisional chart. Okay. And Saturn is very well placed in that chart. So then what will happen? You will work 24 hours. Suppose D9, then your married life or your you know inner self. You are working 24 hours, but you don't know where to go. It's like you have a Ferrari from Mercedes. And you are driving at 200 km per hour. But you don't know where is the destination. Okay. But suppose you have a great Jupiter and not so good Saturn. Then what it means? Then it means that you, you have the perfect map, you see. Google Maps. <laughs> okay, or maybe in iPhone there is a Apple Maps. <laughs> so you have this Apple Map, but the problem is you don't have fuel in your car so you have called 10 people and said i am going to united states i am going to haridwar i am going to melbourne yes but then how do you go no you can't go so both the planets are very important which means one cannot exist without the other jupiter without saturn is simply fake optimism nothing else and saturn without jupiter is just depression you're just working 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 and you don't know what what's going on because here's the thing how they are related jupiter represents vision so you have a vision that okay i want to achieve this in my life you want to achieve you have not achieved then you put in saturn which means you make efforts and you see some results then what happens when you are using saturn properly then your vision gets reinstantiated in your head you say, yes 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 i can achieve that you see because i achieved i want to uh, walk 20 kilometers i have already achieved five kilometers i have walked and now these are the milestones there is a restaurant there there is a dhaba there is a chinese restaurant there's a mexican restaurant in five kilometers or there is a big university after 10 kilometers 
So then what happens? When your Saturn is strong, then Jupiter becomes more stronger. Which means now you are more confident about your vision. Yes, my vision works. I am going in the right direction. I am on the right track. That's what happens when you work, when you activate your Saturn. Now on the other side, suppose you know what you have to do, but you don't know why you are doing it. So then when you have a good Jupiter, then it adds value to your efforts. Then what happens when you have a vision, you feel like putting more efforts. Yes. So if Jupiter is good, it will improve your Saturn also. You will feel that, oh, yes, yes, yes. I may be suffering now. I may be struggling. I, I may be in pain. But that is what I will achieve. See, I have come five kilometers. I need to go 15 kilometers more because the map says first you will get this. Then after 10 kilometers, you will get this milestone. And then after 15, this. And finally, at 20 kilometers, you are at your destination. Okay, so that way Jupiter is making Saturn's struggles worthwhile. Okay, so when we come to spirituality or any area of our life, it is always very important that we keep these two planets parallelly. Okay, hand in hand. First, Jupiter comes. And then Saturn comes because Jupiter, Saturn without Jupiter is, is like worthless endeavor. You are working, 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 but you don't know why you are working. What will you get after you finish working? And Jupiter without Saturn, yes, just, just plans and no implementation. So you never reach your goal, you see. All right. So every time in any area of your life always keep these two together so the first thing we should do is we should strengthen our jupiter because without jupiter we cannot have a good saturn it's not possible okay and then once we strengthen our jupiter then we should strengthen saturn so the question is how to do that well jupiter is naturally strengthened the biggest way to strengthen jupiter the biggest and this is this is so so important and this is this is not only the biggest the fastest and the secret is it is the easiest easy very easy it is and we want to know what that is the easiest way is to stay with spiritually elevated people because if you don't stay with them then what you have to do you have to take out these big books like Bhagavad Gita. Okay, then you have to see. Okay, Krishna is telling uh, in 8.4. You see, oh, best of the embodied beings, the physical nature which is constantly changing is called Adibhuta. And then you are like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> the universal form of the Lord, blah blah blah. So we cannot understand what's written. And imagine we start and we, we think that, oh, I will read the Gita myself. Okay. Well, we may read it. We may theoretically understand, but we will not be able to grasp what is there. We may do it at an intellectual level. Now we may understand what does material nature mean, but what is inside that we cannot understand. Or even if you understand, it will be very limited to our own sense per perception. Okay. So when we go to a guru, when we go to a spiritual community, when we meet God brothers, God sisters, who are also practicing the way we are, then we can ask questions. We can clear our doubts. We can talk to them. We can see that these people are also doing the same thing that I am doing. So our vision gets reinstantiated. Jupiter is the vision. And then, Jupiter becomes strong and apart from that you must pick these big books and study okay because when you read books like the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam or Ramayana or the Bible or the Quran whichever tradition you belong to or you are inspired by 
So just because you are born in a Hindu family, it does not mean that you must read these books only. If the Bible inspires you, you can read the Bible. If the Quran inspires you, you can read the Quran. There's no harm in that. Okay. So when you read these divine books, then it's very easy. See, any page you pick up, any page, this is a ran random page from the Gita I picked up. Okay. So this is seven chapter, sixth verse. What's written? Let's read. All created beings have their source in these two natures. I don't know what two natures. <laughs> of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know of certain that I am both the origin and dissolution. Who is this I? I is Krishna actually. So now Krishna is telling that I am the source and the you know, end of all of this dissolution and this material and spiritual. So if you read this shloka, then what you understand? You understand that nothing is basically yours, right? Everything ultimately is God's property. So then now you become more optimistic because you don't get obsessed with the results. Okay. See, this is a random verse I picked from the Gita. Any random verse. I don't know which chapter it is. I don't know what is the context. Nothing I know. Just this random verse. If I read and I understand, this will radically transform my life. Nothing else I have to do. Just just one verse from the Gita, that is sufficient. If you don't want to read 700 verses, don't read. Just take one verse and try to perfect it in this life. Your life will be successful. <laughs> okay. So then that is how we strengthen our Jupiter. And the biggest way, as I said, is to stay in the company of spiritually elevated people. And then... We strengthen our Saturn. Now the question is, how do we strengthen our Saturn? By doing tapasya, by doing austerity. Okay. So you can do different kinds of austerities. One of the biggest austerity is getting up early in the morning. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Sleeping on time, getting up early in the morning, preferably at 3.30 or 4, at max 4.30. Okay, chanting mantras before the Brahma Muhurat is very, very, very important. If you just do two things in your life, you will see your Saturn. I don't know where it's placed, which sign, which house, which if Saturn is afflicted or it is afflicting other planets, I don't know. But just these two things, if you do, you will see that your Saturn has taken leaps and bounds. Where your Saturn was and now where your Saturn is. What are those two things? Getting up early in the morning and chanting mantras. Okay, so these two things if you do with discipline, every day at the same, same time I will do. 4 o'clock I will get up, 4.30 I will start chanting my mala, my rounds. Then you do this, I am telling you. Just do this for one month. This is my open challenge I am giving it to you. For one month, try to get up at four. Put the alarm. It will snooze, but somehow kick yourself. <laughs> Many times people say, Oh, I don't feel like getting up in the morning when I have to chant mantras. So what to do, you know? And then they expect I will give a very soft, sweet and a very warm answer. I will say, no, no, no problem. I can understand it's difficult. Do it later on, okay? But I, I ask them a question. That suppose tomorrow your boss told you that you have to go to this place and for that your train is at 5.30. So will you get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow or not? Well, how many of us will tell that we will not get up? Everybody will jump off their bed. Yes, because the boss is telling or else I will be fired. Right. Or if you're a businessman, you're a customer. <laughs> you see, everybody is always under somebody's control. So this word uh, where people say you know, self-employed is such a big illusion, actually. Nobody is self-employed in this world. You, you are either employed by your boss or by your client. Okay. So in that case, suppose you are a big businessman and your most important client is coming. 
at 5.30. So will you miss the train? No, you will not miss. So if the client is so important, if your boss is so important, then what about God? He's the, he's the best client that you can have and he's the best boss that you can have. All right. So his appointment is the most important and his appointment should be the first thing that we do in this world, in the day. So the open challenge, just 4 a.m. in the morning, then 4.30 you start with the mantras. Then you see your life transforms radically. And I'm not speaking some big high level lofty philosophy here. Very simple downward practical remedies I'm giving you. Rather than doing some fancy remedy on Saturday, like, you know, for example, fasting on Saturdays or, you know, going and feeding crows, they will not improve your Saturn. They will never improve your Saturn. So many people have done it, but still they are miserable with Saturn, which means they do not have any discipline, any hard work, nothing is there in their life. All right. But if you do these two things, then maybe you feed crows or maybe you don't. Maybe you fast on Saturdays or maybe you know you don't fast, but your Saturn will improve radically. Okay. So these are the two short ways I told you how to improve your Jupiter and Saturn. And just keep checking in each area of your life, your Navamsha, your Dashamsha, your Div Chatur Thamsa, Chatur Vinsamsa, whichever chart you have, whatever is your age, okay. Saptamsha, children. How is my Jupiter? How is my Saturn? And not by looking at your horoscopes, ask this question to yourself. Okay. So rather than writing 10 questions, my Jupiter is exalted in Navamsa. See, there are questions which people ask, which are very funny sometimes. So one day a person asked me a question that my Jupiter is exalted in Navamsa, but it is debilitated in this divisional chart. So what does this mean? And then I'm like, <laughs> It just means what it is supposed to mean. There's no special meaning. There's no some speci special sutra that if a planet is exalted in one divisional chart and debilitated in another, then this will happen, that will happen. There's no sutra like that. Okay. So now you know what Jupiter is. Now you know what Saturn is. So now instead of looking at your horoscopes, just go for five minutes, close your eyes and pray to Lord Ram because his son, he gives you the light. Okay. You pray to him that please show me how is my Jupiter and my Saturn in every area of my life. Okay, whichever divisional chart it is. But if you don't do that and if you go and keep looking at your horoscopes, you will end up in more confusion. Okay. So pray to Lord Ram, analyze yourself and then you look at the divisional charts. Okay. I'm not telling you to go away from astrology. All right. Thank you very much for your patience <laughs> and uh, if you want a consultation from me then you can always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me and yes if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with whoever is interested to know about jupiter and saturn okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him